All right, we've got a pitcher and a catcher. And this pitcher is going to throw the ball. He's going to throw it perfectly horizontally, but what's going to happen? Yeah, it's going to drop. So a lot of people don't realize that when you shoot a gun, the farther you shoot it, the more it drops. The bullet drops too, just like this guy's, this ball's going to drop as well. So, but in this case, number three says, pitcher throws a fastball horizontally with a velocity of 40 meters per second to the catcher. If the catcher is 18.4 meters away, which happens to correspond to 60 feet, six inches. If you don't play baseball, one, you should. So, and two, 60 feet, six inches is the standard distance from the mound to the home plate. So that's how far the catcher is away here, but I was nice and already converted all these lovely things into metric system here for you. Um, but the question is, how much does the ball drop during the flight? How much does the ball drop during the flight? Okay, so in this case, in the horizontal direction, what's true? No acceleration. So let's write that out. So in the x direction, there's no acceleration. What's the only equation we have? Delta x equals vt. Cool. In the vertical direction, what's true? Yeah, we got uniform acceleration due to gravity, in this case, 9.8 meters per second squared downward. All right. Whole host of equations we might want to use. In this case, is it our motion in the vertical direction or the horizontal direction, which one is responsible for this journey of the ball coming to an end? Horizontal, horizontal this time. Then that's the one we're going to need to use to find time. So in this case, do we know the horizontal displacement? Yeah. Do we know the horizontal velocity? Yeah. Great. We can solve for time. Notice that horizontal velocity of 40 meters per second is never going to change because there's no acceleration in the x direction. And anybody get me an answer for that there? Good, 0 0.46 seconds. So that is the length of our journey here. So if I want to know how far this thing drops here in the vertical direction, I'm going to have to deal with our y motion. In this case, what are we trying to really solve for to find out how far things are dropping? What variable? Not the velocity. Displacement. We want the displacement. So in this case, what's my favorite equation? Can I use it? Yeah. Well, you find velocity first. Right, find which velocity first? Find the final. Good, I can find the final velocity first, and then I could use this if I want to. That's one way to do it. Let's, let's take that approach. So in this case, we can say that V final equals V initial plus AT. So your final velocity equals, well, in your y direction, no initial velocity. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then time of 0 0.46 seconds. Great. And what does that get us for a final velocity? And which direction is that point? Down. So notice I didn't worry about making the gravity negative because I knew that the velocity in the entire time was also going to point down. I just have to realize that this point's down. Okay, so what's our average velocity going to be then for this journey? Yeah, 4.51 and 0 average is 2.26-ish times 0 0.46 seconds. And what is our horizontal displacement? Again, so displacement of 1.04 meters down, that's the drop. Now, we used two sets of equations here. There might have been an easier way to calculate this. What's the other way we might have gone about this? Yeah. So in this case, why is this equation pretty convenient in this example? Yeah, V initial is zero. That term goes away. And so all we're left with Don't forget to square it. But this actually, in this case, would have been easier. It's not my favorite equation, but it definitely would have been a little bit faster calculation, truth be told. And someone want to confirm for me this comes out to 
1.04 meters again, or at least close. Great, as it should. Great, there's our drop. <laughs>